What's up YouTube, this is Seekoon from Triple Threat Kicks and I'm back with another video. This is going to be a review on the Adidas NMD R1 Runner. So let's get right into it. This particular colorway is prime knit with lush red and black throughout the knit. Um, one thing I gotta say is in pictures, I noticed this looked really stiff. Like the Kobe 10, if you know, it had like a textile upper that looks like a knit. If you've seen it in person, it was really hard and it just didn't flex with your feet very well. Well, this actually, when you get it in hand, is very soft. It's just like any other prime knit. It's just it's a lot more loosely knit, I guess. Especially with a lifestyle shoe like this, that's just gonna be better for you because you don't really need that support. On the back part, they have these little fuse spots that transition into this gray and black. I like that because it just um, gives a little bit more structure to the shoe, a little bit more things are going on. And then on the back, one of my favorite parts is that it has the back tab that is very similar to what you'll see on the Micro Pacer and the Boston Runner shoes, um, which is what the shoe was inspired by. And it even looks similar, which they do put this on a lot of their shoes. Um, to uh, Adidas, Stan Smiths, and Superstars have this, but they put it in plastic. Another cool part is the pull tab. It says the brand was three stripes, but in different languages, as well as English, but it says like it in Chinese and like German and stuff, which is pretty cool. These laces are 3M, which is another cool touch to the shoe. And one thing I do have to harp on is that the laces are a little too long for the sneaker, so it's kind of hard to lace. Um, I was able to get it to look pretty good, but it has way too much length to them. Like it, you can't really lace them any other way other than this. It's full length boost, but one problem is, is that it does have EVA on the insole, so it kind of takes away from the boost. You're not really directly on the boost, which is kind of a problem, but it's still overall a comfortable shoe. The shoe does come in at $120, which is a lot cheaper compared to the Ultra Boost, which even though it is comfortable, it is $60 more. Um, this is a lot harder for you to get than the Ultra Boost. It's kind of hard to obtain. That's why I did end up having to pay $170 for this shoe at SneakerCon. So that was a bit of a bummer, but I had to do what I had to do to get these. And I do wear these a lot, I noticed. This is a shoe that I can really go to a lot and just wear whenever you want it. It's like a shoe you just have at the front of your door all the time. That's pretty much going to end this review, guys. I hope you guys like this video. This is Seeking from Triple Threat Kicks, guys. Please subscribe and please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I'm out, guys. Peace. The shoe does come in at $120, which is a lot cheaper than the Ultra Boost, which is $180. And it is a lot cheaper. Dude, what? Where are they? What the fuck? Wow. I don't know. That's crazy.